Howdy, my name is Callum, also known as Northern Dice, and today I'm going to give you my full thoughts and full review of Pio's Pigeon Post by Haber. This is a children's set collection-esque numbers game with educational bases behind it, where you are competing as postmasters, effectively, trying to collect stamps that will total and match the value of either a postcard in the simple version or a letter in the more complicated version. As I've already mentioned, this is a children's game and is entirely centred on education. So this is going to be coming from my point of view as a parent and an educator, as opposed to my own personal enjoyment of the game. I will quickly delve into that, but realistically the actual premise of the game and the purpose behind it isn't to give me enjoyment and pleasure, but more to enable my children to be able to access new skills whilst having fun playing games. This is a review copy, but of course, as with all our review copies, we aren't paid for any media produced, and all opinions are our own. In Pio's Pigeon Post, all players will have three stamps available to them at the start of the game. These are from 1 to 7, but of course, in a more simplified game, you will want to remove some of those stamps to make things a little bit easier for younger hands. And you choose whether you are going to play for postcards, which are values up to 10, or letters which are values which exceed that again changed based entirely on the ability of the players at the table on a player's turn they will use or spend stamps to match the value on the card exactly you play two stamps at least and it is a maths game so it is going to be a culmination of those stamps you can't exceed the value and you can't be below if you can match it you spend the stamps, stamp it with the wooden stamper, and you take the postcard or letter respectively, and then it is the next player's turn. If you're not able to match it, you will instead take another stamp to add to your collection, with no hand cap. But if you can match it, you should. The game ends once all letters or postcards have been spent, and whomever has managed to match the most or collect the most is the winner. In a second, I'm going to give you some footage of myself and my son playing this game. We have adjusted the rules for his ability. He has literally just got to an age where he's able to access elements of this, but because we're more focused on number recognition and counting, we won't be looking at the maths ability when we play. However, I will go through the educational benefits of this and how I personally feel that this game can enable children to work with number in a fun, strategized manner. Right, mate, what are we playing? Pigs and Pie. Alright, do you want to go first? Yeah. Okay. Do you think you can make that number? What is it? Seven. Can you make that number? Yeah. Which two stamps are you going to use to try and make it? This one. So count? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah, oh, I did seven. You've gone too many, so can you make seven? No. So you need to get another one. Grab another stamp. But can Daddy make seven? Yes. Why can Daddy make seven? Because you're the best. <laughs> Cheers, Chief. I was thinking more, what number's that? <laughs> Number seven. And I need seven, so can I use this one? Yeah. So I put it in there, and what do I say? Pigeon post. Pigeon post. And I take this and I put it here. Your turn. What number is that? Number nine. It's not number nine, it's number six. Number six. Oh, have nine. you already got it already? Yeah. How many have you got? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you need six. What do you do? Pigeon post. Do you want to pop that on your side over there? Yeah. Good stuff. Oh no, what's daddy got to make? Number nine. But daddy it's... can't make the number nine, so what have I got to do? Get another one. Get another one. Right, your turn. You've got to make the number... That one. That one, the number that one. What number is it? Number... Two, I am number one. So it's number ten. What is it? Ten. Can you make the number ten? Yeah. Go on then, can you count for me? One. I don't think you'll need that. Should we try just counting the other ones? I'll give you a hand. You count the other ones, how many have you got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And how many
many did you need? Pigeon post. You needed ten, so pigeon post it. Pigeon post. And you get the stamp card. And then we have to spend your stamps, remember? Yes. Ooh, how many stamps have you got? I've got one. Ooh, I think you need another one, so I think you might need to get another one out of the pile, because you've got to have two, haven't you? Well done. Oh my. Uh, what are you doing? How many stamps did you need, Cheeky Charlie? Two. Two. How many have you got now? Mm. You've got one stamp. Two stamps. Two stamps. What number's this for Daddy? Number five. Number five. Can, has Daddy got number five in his stamps? Let's check. One. Have I got the number five? Can you see it on my stamps? Let's count them. You want to count them? Go on then. Yeah. One, two. Use your finger. Three, four, four. Two, three, four. I've got number three. I've got still got not got the number four. So what am I going to have to do? The another one. Oh. <laughs> oh, I think someone might be able to make the number four. Which of your tiles do you think can make the number four if you use them? Can you pick two tiles to help you make the number four? One, two, three, four. And the other one? One, two, three, four, five. five. So is that one any help? No. No. What about this one? One, two, three, four, five. So is that any help? No. Which of these ones do you think is going to help you make the number four? I think it's... I think... That one and that one's gonna make number four. Should we count them then? Yeah. One, two, three, four. <gasps> Quick, spend them. And what do you need to do? Pigeon post. Pigeon post. Right, mate, should we count up our scores? Yeah. So we've got to count all of our postcards. So daddy got one, two, two three. three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. How many did you get? Like Do you want some help? Four. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't add up the numbers, I'm afraid, Spud. Right, if I put them down, can you count? One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if you got nine and Daddy got eleven, which number's bigger? Nine. Is it? <laughs> which one is bigger? Your number or my number? If I got eleven and you got nine. Daddy has been. So Daddy wins. No prisoners, Daddy wins. Yeah! And I win too. Good game? Yeah. Go on. With Pio's Pigeon Post having an entirely educational basis, I'm going to talk about that as a primary before I talk about the enjoyment that my son had with the game and the enjoyment that I've had out of other children who've played this game as well. I will touch into how adults will respond to this and putting it bluntly how tolerable it is because I know that some educational games are very wow at the start but can sometimes be a little bit more particularly if you're wanting to have a proper game game whether that will fit the bill in any capacity so straight out the bat the obvious thing is that this is all about numbers and the big thing for me is number recognition and being able to actually identify what um, numerical value is associated to what character and I think the game does a very sensible job with this because it's very common sense you can very easily discern which is the five and which is the eight based on the number of symbols on the card the numbers are nice and easy to see in a very standardized format um, one thing I did notice was that the sevens on the stamps against the sevens 
on the postcards or letters do differ. We have a very standard 7 on the postcard and we have a very European 7, which is a 7 with a line through it, on the um, stamps. Which wasn't an issue for the players that I played with, but I did see it as something that was just something that stood out to me. Particularly from an educational side standpoint. With that as well, the game also encourages a lot of counting and quite a little, well, quite a little bit, quite a lot of adding as well, particularly as you move into the realms of a more difficult game, which I thought was fantastic because it was a very easy way to get children adding in a context where they don't recognise that they're adding. Even if that is the very simple basis of counting the array of 2x3 for 6 and then adding on the two extras to make it 8. Or... On the flip side, being able to recognise that they've got the number 6 and then they've got the number 2 and using a mental method, which would be 6 in your head and count on 2, to be able to get to the total that they're able to get. The flip side of this is that you can use it on a subtractional basis where you look at the letter value as example and start subtracting the values you've got until you can get it down to 0 perfectly, knowing which, one stamp, knowing which stamps you would then use for that. As far as number work goes, for addition and subtraction, this is a fantastic little starting point. It's nothing too complicated, and as you could see, my son, who was at the very, very start of his mathematical journey in education, was able to access it in some capacity. The only reason I included all the stamps in was to help with that number recognition. But of course, if you've got children who are still working on bonds to 10, you could easily just remove the letters, uh, sorry, flip the letters to postcards and remove any numbers that they're quite confident with to ensure that they're able to work with numbers that they need to if you were going for that basis. Or, on the flip side, include all the stamps and just play entirely on that adding basis. In terms of other skills, I did find that the game was very good for teaching turn-taking and communication. And of course, as an adult, it was a fantastic opportunity to model how you would do that, discussing what you were going to do on your turn. It isn't a game that you want to be silent in. As with any educational or any children's game, you need to discuss what you're doing because even though you aren't directly educating the child, you're still modelling what you would do on a turn and showing them the proper etiquette and practice that you'd use even if it's as simple as oh I've not got the stamps that I need because I can see that I need eight and I've only got a six and a one and six and one is etc if you've got more confident children you could have them check for you it's a game that has got a lot of depth in terms of that communication availability in it surprisingly a lot because it wasn't a game that struck me as one that would require a lot of talking and discussion as a focal point and I think that is to its benefit massively, but should have been more obvious from the rule set because the rules are very... I'd say they're very written to be accessible by children, which I think is good, but as an adult I'd want to know, particularly if I wasn't confident in teaching my child how to do things with games, I'd want to know what questions I could ask, and since it is an educational game, it makes sense to have those in there as well. In terms of the competition side, as you saw, my son, he doesn't like losing because he said we both win, which is fine. And he's learning very slowly on how winning and losing works and that it's okay to lose. But I know there are some children and some adults who do not like losing whatsoever. So we quite often play it from a personal standpoint of did I beat my previous score? And of course, it does build into that social interaction element again and teaching children what the best model practice is of I lost, oh, never mind, or I won, yay for me, and being able to celebrate for others as well. The game's theme as well is very gentle, it's called Pigeon Post. I get the relevance, Messenger Pigeon, my son, not really, just what is quite cool that there was a pigeon in a baseball cap playing the game on the front cover. He's in the same Pigeon Post when he stamps the um, letter, it was quite exciting for him. Everything fits the bill for him as a four-year-old beautifully. Older children, they probably won't be as into it, but it's that competition that they'll crave and being able to work with those numbers quickly that the adults will want from them. As for the actual fun factor, they really enjoyed the drive to be as competitive as possible and the excitement of seeing that a letter or a postcard with a value that they could total had come up. I've never seen a child so excited to see the number 9 ever and it was because they had a 2, a 3 and a 4 to memory and they were the only people who could make it and even though there was a full table of people ahead of them, it was that excitement of knowing the... well... The build-up, knowing that they were going to be the one to get the card. 
And of course, if they were not going to get the card, knowing how they would remedy or work with the next one by either taking new stamps or working with it. There is an element of luck within it because all the cards, all the stamp tiles are face down when you start, so you can't see or plan or tactically take, which is sensible from an adult standpoint, but for children, I think... If you wanted to really give them the ample opportunity to be able to win or play effectively, I'd suggest having the tiles flipped over because then they can start totaling ahead of time to see what they'll need. But maybe that's me trying to get it from a more educational basis and forgetting that at the core of this is still a board game. And it is a board game that my son and the other children that I have played this with have really enjoyed because it's something that they can get their teeth into and access on their own. And in time, I'm hoping it's something that my son will be able to play with his playdate friends on his own without an adult needing to lead. Of course, you might need someone just to be that, you know, rules manager, knowing full well that children do argue and try and twist it to their whim. But that's just what happens, and it's just one of those things that children need to learn how to do beyond gaming. As for tolerability as an adult... It's tolerable. It's not an un, it's not an unpleasant game. It's enjoyable. You are running entirely on the randomness of a tile flip, and it is entirely coincidental as to whether you'll get it or not. And I'm running on the assumption that most adults can quickly add four numbers together to totally under 30. If you're able to do that, it will feel a bit like you are just running the routine of who's got the cards at the time and there's no tactics to it. And it isn't, but you've got to remember that Inevitably, the game isn't for you. It's not aimed at you, it's not targeted at you. You are there as the facilitator or to fill body spaces to ensure that the child is able to play it. I enjoy playing it a little bit. It's not one that I'll choose to play more than two or three times. Haber have got much more fantastic, dexterous, dexterity-based games with other educational values that I will choose to play with my son over this. But this is one that he will choose to play. He really enjoys working with the numbers, even though he's right at the start of his mathematical journey, and he will want to be the one to distribute the letters or hold the stamp to stamp it. The excitement in actually physically doing to do something quite mental or tactical is what makes him excited. It's one that you will play with your children, and it's one that you will hope that they can play on their own, because you want them to be confident in number, and because it isn't going to give you the tactical meat that you'd want from other games. In a nutshell, I'd highly recommend this to families of gamers who have got young children or gamers who have got young children. I think the target age of 5 plus is right on the money. But my son was 3 when he started playing this and it's only because it was recently his birthday, is able to access some of those numbers because he can count to 10, he can count to 15, and as long as he's got that support of someone counting the dots for him so that he's able to manage it, he's able to do some very simple addition. The accessibility is entirely based on how well you can scale that difficulty. And if you can reel it back so that someone who has got very little number knowledge can play, then you can also amp it up so that children who are quite mathematically minded can play it as well. My word of warning there is that the more mathematically minded they get, the more tactical they get, and the more tactical they get, the more meat they need on the bone from a game. This is fantastic from an educational point of view. Great as a board game point of view, for play for children of a young age. But if you are wanting something that is going to get the more tactical children's really mind thinking, probably don't go for an educational game in the first place. However, from that standpoint, I would definitely recommend this. This has been my relatively brief review of Pio's Pigeon Post. Thank you ever so much for sticking around. I'll catch you next time.